We finally got started and headed toward the woods. This is uh, Elvis. Nick's gonna get him out. And we're gonna harness him up. Yeah, Elvis is just a pet. He's <laughs> he he gets away with way more than he should. I wouldn't put up with that with any other horse. I don't think I'd have another horse that would try that. He knows he's going to work, and he says, you know what, I like standing in the barn. He's really not. Um, really not adverse to this. He's just being a putz. So here comes Elvis, as lazy as he is. Every once in a while, I question his uh, bloodlines. I think he might be by a different stallion than I thought he was. Nick, can you do this? Nick, quick. Yeah. Ooh. Nick thought I was going to get that, but I couldn't hold the phone and do that at the same time. Cross-tied. We'll get him harnessed right up here. That's good. Just get Elvie out for now. So, uh, Nick's going to grab Elvis's harness. Bridle first. Here, I'll hang that up. I'll hang this bridle right there. So when we're done harnessing, we got it. And Nick has the collar. He's going to collar Elvis. That is a, let me look at this collar for a minute. It is a, I guess you can't see in the dark. It's stamped 29 and it's a full collar. We'll get it on the horse. I'll show you a little bit here. Fits him good. I like it. It's actually a little tight because he's fat, but hopefully he's losing that weight right now. He won't be fat for long. But 29 inch collar. I like the extra wide pads. Um, this is a full collar right here. It's full. It's not cut away. It's not a half Sweeney or even a full Sweeney. He's got a bit of a trim neck for a, for a horse his size, and that fits him good. Um, he started uh, just the very beginnings of getting a sore last summer. And um, we switched him from a half Sweeney to that full face collar and no issues. Uh, personally, I think the full collar is underutilized and a uh, full Sweeney is way overutilized. Throw his harness on him. See the way I just boss Nick around and Time to lift something heavy, I tell him just throw the harness on and I do the easy part. So this is Elvis's work harness. That's his go-to-town harness. <laughs> this is his work harness and you'll see why. It is an ugly harness. Very functional. Nick's putting the hames in place and he works his way right back that tug. Belly band. Tug puts what some people call the spider on top. And uh, he's going to come around here next and get the hames right in place. Sorry, Nick. See that? I'm fine. Pretty good hame on this horse. I like the way this hames fit this collar. I wish, uh, wish I could get them all to fit that well. good for now. I'm going to put this one in. We check that both uh, elevators, excuse me, are on the top notch. See, there's one, two, three adjustments, and they're both in the same notch. This horse wears them in the top notch, so that's right. Put your hand, put your hand here. Yep. Let me stand back and get a better view of what Nick's doing. He's buckling this hame strap. I like to buckle them real tight. And he's going to buckle the uh, other hame strap. Don't be afraid to push this up and get rid of that little gap there. LV your putts. <laughs> so there goes Nick. That's good. I'm going to buckle the second hame strap. On a mature horse, I like to run pulling hames. They fit the collars better. Um, get a lot more draft adjustment. They're, they're well worth the money. These are an old set of hames and uh, still holding in good. That's not quite fit as good as normal, but there we 
go. This is normally a real good fit in Haim, but that fits the collar pretty good. I like that collar and Haim fit. It's a bit snug, but I'd way rather have snug than too tight. Next thing Nick does, he comes around here, pulls the britching down, and uh, puts the tail crouper on. That's another thing I run is the tail crouper. Uh, it just keeps everything in line and in place. If they put their head down, the check doesn't pull the britching up. Um, just something I've always done. And I, uh, I've seen guys get away without a tail crouper, but I, I, I can't stand it. I want everything right in place. So we got the tail crouper. Who, who, who folded those lines up? Yeah, I think we know. Yeah. Belly band. This belly band on this style harness will go right through the D ring. Terrible videography. Nick will film the next one and it'll be better. And we hook that. It looks like we're hooking that plenty tight. But once everything settles in, that won't be near as tight. I like a little space under the horse. Good Lord, maybe that is too tight. Yeah, loosen that up one notch if you would. He's getting fat. Uh, I like a little space between the horse's belly and the belly band. So, Nick's fixing that. There we go. And while you're at it, Nick, we may as well bridle the boy. Baby Elvis, what a sweet eye he has. We take the, I, I try to always take the halter off when I put a bridle on. A lot of people make a big fuss of that. I, I, I just like it. I prefer it. The look of it, the feel for the horse. Uh, I think it's the right thing to do. I always tell people, hey, you gotta take that off. As you see, we are twisted on the overcheck. There we go. I do run two bits. I'll get to that in a minute. But anyway, back to the halter under the bridle. It's just more comfortable. It doesn't interfere with your driving. It looks better. I always tell people, what would your grandfather think? You don't look at old pictures. Starting in about 1990 backwards, you just don't find pictures of people who had their halter under their bridles. Um, now you do. It's it's more common than not. Um, I don't do it. And I'm not even afraid to tie to the bit. People say you shouldn't. You'll have trouble. I've, I've never had trouble. I've been 47 years old. I've been logging, working horses since I was seven. Logging with them since I was probably 10. Never really had an issue tying by the bit. So there we go. All these bridled pretty comfortably. Uh, Nick's going to put his overcheck on. Okay, try to show this. We like to uh, run the overcheck. I should have stood on a ladder for this. We like to run it under the back pad. Just keeps everything comfy and tight and, and in place. And we do not like to run it under over the line. Really passive aggressive of me the way I'm talking to Nick here. But he saw it. He's got it under the back pad and now he's gonna grab that. Yep, just like that. And he's got him checked. Uh Nick? Yeah. One more thing. Hook the extra hame strap we keep on top. So on top of these horses. A lot of them. I like to run an extra hame strap on top. Uh, I like the fit. That's good. The way it pulls the collar snug on top and keeps the horse comfortable. Uh, a lot of the guys like the safety of it. If if the top hame strap or these elevators or anything break. So there we are. Elvis is harnessed and ready to go. I told you I'd talk a little on his. Uh, is bridling, so uh, this tape is not holding anything together. That just tells us that that's Elvis's bridle. He has tape on his, the other one doesn't. Uh, I run blinders, I always have, um, which is the poorest excuse in the world to do something, but it's always worked for me and uh, and I like the protection it gives them. And uh, Personally, I don't want a horse seeing what I'm doing back there. Um, 
I tend to fidget with my lines a lot. I don't need them to get scared when I'm, they see me fidgeting with my lines or tossing them over my shoulder or something. Um, the only time I see a big disadvantage is like if we're walking up a road and a uh, car pulls up and they don't see it until it gets in front of their blinder. But other than that, I, I don't. Uh, do run an over check. I want these horses' heads in the right position. And you notice Elvis had his head in this position before we ever harnessed him. He's pretty natural at that. I don't always run over checks, but uh, in fact, Elvis's mom, I never once did, and her head is never out of position. But uh, I like to keep their head up. It kind of uh, creates a fulcrum, pushes their butt down, and they pull from the rear, not the front. Um, keeps them from fidgeting around and trying to eat grass and stuff. And uh, for the overcheck, I do run a small bit. Uh, that's just, uh, if they're hanging on the check, I'm actually driving with the driving bit, not the overcheck bit. Makes it a lot easier. I run a very gentle bit. Uh, egg butt snaffles usually. Elvis has just, should have showed it before he put it in his mouth. A little bit of a twisted pattern. It's because I'm working with, working him with a two-year-old, and I don't want him to bully the colt around. Um, so I hold him back a little more than I do the colt. Um, so I guess uh, Elvis is harnessed and ready to go, and we'll have some better videographer on the next one. I'll harness the colt, and Nick will film that. Well, Elvis needs a teammate, so we have young Zodiac here good day for him to have a good day we left the halter on a minute ago because we knew that he was uh coming out here to work unless zodiac has improved way more than i think you'll see what i mean when i say that he's a piss pot and gets into trouble all the time i'm just gonna open this door here so same manner We'll harness this guy. He's growing. I'm, I like that. He needs to grow, and he is. I want him to finish out. I'd love him to be a 1,900-pound horse when he gets done. And I think maybe he will. Uh, feeding him a lot of protein and trying to build some, build some bone and muscle. He went over here to the collars. Nick, I'll show this. Helps his big butt. So yeah, here's our collection of harnesses. <laughs> my uh, go-to-town pulling harnesses. My used-to-be go-to-town pulling harnesses that now we break colts with them. And our D-ring work harnesses. Uh, we got three of them. Um, extra lines. These are old, old lines. My dad had these made in, I think, 1987, and I'm still using them. Uh, we got some extra hames. We actually still use the aluminum hames sometimes. Uh, I don't prefer them, but it's what I have. And as you look around, we've got a bunch of extra collars. Uh, I don't have a horse that fits this anymore. He's one of the ones I lost to botulism. Uh, Elvis wears that sometimes. Sometimes it gets a little big on him. Uh, most of my collars are, uh, like everybody, most of mine are a half Sweeney pulling collar. Uh, just a better, better material, better made collar than a farm collar. I do have some farm collars that we start colts in and stuff. Uh, and actually, there's a good old Irish collar. Boy, they're trim and they fit good. I would not I would never say they're better quality than a pulling, or a pulling collar is better than these. This is an old, old collar. Got a good bunch of draft, you know, wide draft around the middle. Um, just a good old collar. Fits a young horse like a glove. That's what it started this uh, Zodiac cold in. And then we got two more. Uh, I don't know, I think a 28 and a 25 inch pulling collar. I've got a bunch of 25 inch pulling collars. Uh, and uh, I don't know why. You rarely need a 25 inch pulling collar. I happen to have one on this horse today, but uh, I, I'd trade them for some 27s and 8s if anybody wanted. We'll get this colt down so if you look here i just switched this colt to a uh, over check bit also and he's in a egg butt snaffle rig and I, I like to drive him especially cold on a sensitive uh, bit 
Uh, this is what I was running on. It's what I broke him in and I ran in him for a long time and it was comfortable and nice. Trouble was he got bigger and the bit is, as you see, too narrow and it didn't fit his mouth good, but it was still comfortable on him and they're, they're hard to find. These are, I'll show off a little bit. These are some of my uh, go to town haulers. These were a driver's award at a poll we went to in Ohio. These Arcade Village Cafe, they were a best appearing team. So show off a little more. We got a horsemanship award. So we got a few, a few show off things around here. Anyway, we'll get the, uh, the colt harnessed up. Oops. So I grab the halter, or bridle rather, and grab the collar, and we go to work putting it on. I'll hang this bridle up for when we need it at the end. I've got a friend that's a lot smarter than we are. He uh, he puts the bridles on the hook first, so they come off last, and that's the order you uh, you harness a horse in. And we'll put his collar on. That collar looks like it's plenty big, but it's not seated. When that gets seated, that's a pretty darn good fit. Might be losing a little, a little neck as he hardens in. That's not a bad fit though. Nick, if you could show from the side. You see, uh, Zodiac, if you take a broad view from the side, has a splendid slope of shoulder. Matches his, as it should, matches his pasterns on front and back. Uh, I like a nice slope of shoulder. Um, it looks beautiful, keeps their head in the air nice. Uh, usually it's a pretty sharp horse that goes along with a nice slope of shoulder. I also like that the collar sits back and rests right against the full shoulder here instead of hanging from the top like a horse with a steep shoulder. Uh, most of my horses are pretty good with a slope of shoulder. This guy's exceptional. The downside is it's hard to fit the draft and collar to a horse with a steep shoulder. And uh, we probably had four collars on him three sets of hames before we landed on something we like. So now I'll get the harness and get the boy harness. <coughs> I put the britching and the uh, hip straps over my shoulder, unhook the tail crouper, and then I grab each hame by the side, pick it up, I make sure nothing's twisted. And on the horse I go. Get over, partner. This horse has been harnessed since April, pretty steady. For over a month, month and a half, he's been harnessed almost daily and had blankets on him a lot. He's still a touch jumpy when you put a harness on him, when you throw it over his back. It's just his nature, but I see improvement every day with him. I don't know if it showed in the camera or not, but Nick is becoming a horseman. He knew this horse is a little jumpy, can be a putz when you put the harness on him. And so Nick, he just rubbed him right here and calmed him down and kept this horse calm while we put the harness on. And, uh, Kind of wanted to point out that he's uh, really becoming a horseman. So now we fit the uh, hames to the collar. These are farm hames. I didn't have any this small for a smaller, any pulling hames this small that weren't already in use on another harness. So this is what we're using. I'll buckle this real tight. Overall, that hame fits the collar pretty well. If you look up top, we are in the, uh, okay, up here. We're in the middle part of the elevator. 
Uh, generally, I like to be in the top elevator, but this is what I made fit him, so it's working. Uh, I always tell people I want a 28-inch hame on a 28-inch collar on the top elevator. Um, if you look over here for just a quick second, you will see most of our hames don't have elevators. They have six adjustments, five adjustments, if I could count up and down with a bolt. That's a nice system right there. Of course, I just got done telling you I like them in the top one, and here this one's in the middle also. But Sometimes uh, you don't always get what you want. As far as draft goes on this horse, they're farm hames that don't have a lot of adjustment. I have this draft adjusted pretty high uh, simply because uh, we're on a log cart and the point of draft is waist high as opposed to a pulling sled or a plow or something that the point of draft is ankle high. So I raised this. Uh, I did not, I, uh, I've never done this before where you just run the tug right through here without that extra piece in here to adjust and, and to swivel. But this front tug on this harness is way too long. It should be 22 inches from hame to D-ring. And um, when I put that on there, it was way longer than 22 inches and the D-ring was not doing its function. So right now it is right around 23 inches. It's still too long, but I haven't changed it yet. It's the way I bought the harnesses. Just like Nick did, I'll come around back and I'll tolerate him running around a little bit. Pull the britchin in place, put his crouper on him. Make sure the heel chains look good. And I'll pick up the, uh, the line that somebody else that somebody else didn't uh, hang well. There it is. I like to tuck it in the britchin. Get over, partner. I will hook the belly band. And the harness portion of this will be done. That's not a bad belly band fit. It used to be way too big, but um, he grew into it. So uh, We'll get more into this D-ring as we hook on to something. But there he is, harnessed. Things look pretty decent. You'll notice my harnesses are a combination. <laughs> Leather, which I don't prefer. I did once upon a time, 1992, when I bought a lot of these harnesses. Uh, some bio. Uh, some bio and nylon together and nylon here and bio here whatever we can use we make work so, nick if you come around front here uh, i'll fix this line too and then i'll bridle that colt uh zodiac here has learned to stand pretty well as we bridle him. Look at there, he's reaching for the bridle already. But just in case you have a horse that doesn't stand well when you bridle them and you want to keep him haltered and tied, I'll show you what to do. You just tie him up like normal. And first thing I always do when I get a bridle ready, he's such a putt. I, uh, I make sure everything's ready in position. So, push the bits right against his teeth, pull his crown up onto him, over the halter for now, and then uh, I go ahead and buckle his throat latch. I buckle a throat latch fairly tight. The last thing I want a horse is to rub his head and um, knock his, pull his bridle off. So I'm going to tie into the bridle, which some people hate. I always do. <laughs> now, if you want to get this halter off with the bridle on, unbuckle it from the side. Unbuckle it, pull that strap around, 
pull this strap around and then nose band goes right over the nose into the mouth the nose band goes under the bit and he's unbridled kind of like how a uh, girl takes her bra off with leaving her shirt on i guess Well, we got him bridled. Let's get the check, and then we'll actually try to get hooked this up. So this little boy, no, I do the check different than I do a lot of horses. And I don't have an extra hame strap on the top of his. Maybe I should, but I don't. I actually have an extra ring on his overcheck. And this fool needs an overcheck. Some horses don't. This guy, well, he did when I first started him. Now he's pretty good. I could probably take it away, but... So I just hook those two snaps into the ring. Keeps everything centered. Make sure this doesn't slide to the side of his face. Uh, and then snap his overcheck. Not too tight. You see, we're, we're real loose with that overcheck. And we'll uh, stop there. We'll hook this team together. You see Elvis being Elvis, got his ears back. So I hook the outside lines. The long line always goes to the outside. The long one piece line goes to the outside. They're driving pretty good together, so I'm putting both of them in the same adjustment on the end of the line right now. If, uh, if one of them was ahead of the other, I would hook that horse a little closer on that adjustment. I got him there. So, cross lines, check lines, whatever you want to call them. It's the short line, and it goes to the inside. Short from the buckle to the inside. Long one-piece line goes to the outside. I say that a hundred times. I got out to East Lansing, Michigan this year and hooked to the machine on the first load and I had my lines hooked backwards. <laughs> so it happened. I've got spreaders on here, but I'm not running them right today. But sometimes I, I like to run double spreaders. Only double spreaders, I don't care for single spreaders. There's some big advantages with spreaders. Maybe we'll get into that someday. Again, I'm hooking them all, <laughs> hooking them all uh, equal on the, on the lines here. I don't like the way those hames are fitting today. We're gonna, probably after we work them for a few minutes, we're going to buckle those again. Again, long line to the outside. And they're ready to go to work. Four lines hooked. You always want to make sure of that. Sorry. A lot of times with a young horse, I'll have a helper here to hold their head. My helper's holding the phone right now. You're okay. I got him. But I get around here quickly. Get the lines, Ooh. and I make them wait till I tell them, and I'm going to drive to the cart. Muddy, muddy around here, but, and a filthy mess that I should be cleaning up. they are. I take this outside tug and get a little leverage and I pull them right in. Keeps them together. Ooh. This pair is not the best about hooking on. And they're not going to run away or anything, but they are going to act stupid. Okay? 
I hang the lines up. I get my pony yokes, jockey yokes. I have no idea what they're called. I didn't grow up with this type of harness. I put these things on. All part of the D-ring harness here. Ouch. not ideal but when I have everything hooked right and tight I've never had that come off the tongue but I should have that much or a plug that goes in the end but when everything's hooked well you never have trouble with that I'll come around here and hook some heel chains this is not a set of harnesses they're two different harnesses tugs on the zodiac here are a little longer than the tugs on Elvis. So he gets hooked all the way tight. What we'd normally say uh, one from the D, but there is no D. These have a swivel, which I don't like. The swivels tend to pull through with time and break, but it'll be good enough till he gets older. So you stay right where you are, Nate. Eh? I'll hook LV boy. Like you saw, hey, we just hooked uh, one from the D with him. Elvis will drop two. And as these horses back up, and the tighter I hook these traces, the higher that tongue will raise. Back, whoop, back, whoop. Probably should have been ready. Whoop, lazy horse, back. Back, back, Ooh, Nick, grab them with one hand and back them up. Tail mid Nick. Back, back, Ooh, there we go. Let's go around front. Woo. The D-ring harness has one advantage. It keeps all the weight off the collar. All this tongue, excuse me, all this tongue weight. There's nothing between the jockeys, the end of the tongue and the collar. It all goes through this up into the back pad. And it's carried on the back where it's much more comfortable and you're much less likely to have a sore neck like I've showed you on my old Libby mare who had that uh, fistula. Come over here to LV Nick and we'll show the same thing. Elvis has some straps here, completely loose. One hundred, all the weight is on there. You know, I can set my overweight butt on this wet neck yoke and still loose. All the weight is on the back pad. Um, to me, that's the only advantage of a D-ring harness. Well, one of the only advantages, but by a mile the biggest and very important for a logging horse. Uh, the other thing I really like about a D-ring, everything is centered. I don't like the old 90 degree philosophy. You gotta put that draft where you gotta put it. You get a nice steep neck like this, 90 degrees, that heel would be hitting here. The, the tug would. Uh, you gotta put the draft where the collar sits good and doesn't ride up or down on the horse. But I also, like I said, everything's very centered. Your back pad doesn't slide back. Uh, your belly band's in the right place. Um, I really like that about a D-ring. Has some disadvantages. You need extra parts and these little jockey yokes and stuff like that. But um, the advantages far outweigh the disadvantages. I'll climb up here and we will head to the woodlot. Whoa.
As you were looking at my favorite plow that wasn't greased and put away for the fall, I didn't put the hay elevator away. It's kind of been a rough year around here. Uh, but, but I would like to show you a few things here Ooh. on these eveners. If you noticed, Zodiac, who's much smaller and younger than Elvis, is all the way out on the evener. Come around to Elvis or just pan over here, you'll notice he is all the way in on that evener. That is uh, two inches. Elvis is what us horse pullers would say, two inches in the hole. Uh, Zodiac, the young one, has a two inch advantage. The way that advantage works by sliding a stronger horse toward the center is just like this PV right here. If I'm moving a big log, I'm not gonna pull here where I have no leverage. I'm gonna get out on the end where I can really have some leverage. And it's the same thing with those eveners. Elvis is pulling here somewhere. Zodiac, who's not as strong and well-trained, is pulling here. So he has a lot of advantage. It's just one thing I want to point on the eveners. Ooh.